Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap is all lathe work. I do some offset bushes, a little bit of work which seems to take quite a long time. I show a bit of that. I've had issues this week with broadband upload speeds. I haven't been able to put on the videos I wanted with the Stuart Turner engine. I haven't been able to upload any 4K video on the parent channel. It's just taken so long. Hopefully it'll be all sorted middle of this week. The parent channel is going well. If you have a look at the description box, there's a link you can click. That takes it to my parent channel. If you want to support me, by all means do so. The one video I have uploaded this week is a weld review on a little SIP MIG from my friend Rob from Extreme Plasma. Quite nice little unit running flux core wire. Really impressed with it. Certainly well worth having a look at. I've got a little machinery job to do here. Basically, I've got to make two bushes, but the bushes have got offset holes in them. There's one 30mm long, one 15mm long, 24mm diameter with a 10mm hole through, and the 10mm hole is offset 5mm. So it's basically something like that, but the hole is going to be across here. I think what I'll probably do is put the four jaw chuck in and put a collar chuck inside the four jaw chuck and do it that way. I've got some 25mm bars so that's not a problem. So we'll get things set up and see how we get on. Sure, if that chuck's getting heavier, I'm getting weaker. I'm going to put this square collar chuck into the into that chuck and I can offset it easily instead of having to try and offset the part in the chuck. Anyway, I'm sure it'll all become crystal clear as we get on with it. Use the, the lines on the chuck to get it somewhere near, they're not just for sure, they're there to, to try and help you. So if we line the lines up, you can get it pretty near just by sort of eyeballing things. Not a million mile away. We'll put a part in here now and clock it in. This is a shank of a broken milling cut so it's a nicely ground parallel piece of bar, ideal for setting this chuck up with
I'll bring the camera in so you can see more clearly what I'm trying to do. Maybe we can clearly see there's a gap between the end of the clock gauge and the piece of bar so it wants to come towards me. We'll loosen that one off, tighten that one up. Again, it's going to come across this way a little bit. And some more. Right now we're getting a reading 30 thought of truth. I'll move the camera so you can actually see the, the clock gauge. It's difficult to get a a true image of a clock gauge with the way the light's shining. What it wants is a little cover on there like that. Some of that could make, I suppose. That would be worth doing. Right, that's not ideal, but you can see it there. So all you do is find the highest reading, which is that one, and you would tighten that, tighten that jaw, or loosen off the opposite one and tighten that one, depending on how far you wanted to move it. Pretty near now, so we'll find a high one, which is that one. We'll tighten that once again. High one, getting somewhere near now. That's a high one there, so we'll tighten that. Right, and that's pretty good, that's within half a thou, that's about as good as it's going to get. Make sure all the jaws are nipped up, which they will be. Right, we'll settle for that. So we need one at 30 and one at 15. So we need 50 mil. We want enough material hanging out, but not too much, that'll do. The more of a hang you've got, the worse things become. And I have got to take some off this so it will be running dead true once we take a little bit of it. It looks not too bad at the minute. I'll put a clock on just out of interest to see. It's just ordinary braid bar, it's nothing special. But it's interesting to see what the collets like compared to the, the other one. There are a decent set of collets I've got. Not the best but pretty good. And that one is actually spot on. So that gives you a little bit of faith in the collets. We're going from one side to the next and the reading is basically the same. I think the brake on this lathe wants to just a little bit. 24.51. Right, this is down to dead size, 24 mil.
haven't got a tolerance on this job but that I reduced our things for a, a core alternator so it'll not be that not be that critical the way just about that 24 mil A little bit of heat in it, but not much. Right, I'll settle for that. Right, now for the interesting bit, turn that off, we need to offset it 5mm, we'll change it for a metric one, it'll be easier than trying to convert it to imperial, I'm working more and more metric now. It's handy having a, a dial gauge with a lug on, a lug on the back to mount your gauge off. Very handy indeed. That simply goes into this spare tool holder, actually tool holder I made. That goes into there like that. Then we need to set this on centre height. It's very important when you're doing offsets. Right, so that's the metric DDI installed. <coughs> we can basically look at it. And set it on centre height by eye and then check it is actually on centre height. Right, so if I lift this up and down, you see the reading gets higher and starts to drop off. So that's below centre height. That's above centre height, so centre height is On that 20 there. And we'll load the, the clock gauge up. It's on zero there in the little centre wheel. Zero the outside. We want to bring this 5mm towards me. So basically, I'm going to loosen this jaw off. Tighten the other one, which should push it across five mil. So the offset you're getting is actually ten. Was it five each say, which is exactly what he wants. That's a big offset that I'm wearing them up, that's too much, you can't even get that. I don't think I'll be able to drill a 10mm hole in there. 
So you must be a two and a half mil offset, which is five mil total. I'll give him a ring, we'll leave it at that for the minute. 